Hey Computational Thinking and welcome to your first NTI video uh, for this class. Uh, I hope you're doing okay and that your family is safe and healthy right now. Um, I also hope you're kind of looking forward to getting back to some kind of education. Uh, I know it's going to be weird, but uh, we're going to make the best of it and I think some of you might even prefer uh, this type of learning anyway, so we'll see. Um, if you weren't on our Google Meet, I want you to know that from this point forward, every Monday at 10.30 a.m., this lecture will be live for you to watch on YouTube. And I'll post links and all that good stuff well before the lecture is going to start. Um, but it will also be recorded, so that means if you don't want to wake up at 10.30, um, which you may not, uh, you can watch it at your own discretion later on in the week. And you, you know, if I'm going too fast or you want to review something that I've said, you can always stop it, start it, and kind of go back and forth and whatnot. So anyway, uh, what we're going to spend most of our time talking about here at the end of school is reading and writing from and to files using Python. Those terms might be completely unfamiliar to you. So let's start there. Uh, when I say reading from a file, what I mean is opening up a file to look at the data. And when I say writing to a file, I mean saving or uh, really I mean saving that file to a, you know the computer uh, to a permanent place um, or maybe changing some data and then saving it or maybe making a new file uh, and saving that new file. We'll get into more examples in just a second. But the reason why this particular subject is so important, the reason it's essential for here at the end of all things at this, at this year um, is because there really aren't many instances of a programmer's real job where they're not working with files and, and reading and reading from and writing to those files um, or at least working with permanent data right up to this point we've been doing nothing but opening up our programs running them and then everything resets right we don't ever save anything permanently that's about to change because um, we're going to learn how we actually get that stuff to stay it stay in place on the computer, on a phone, anything that's computational, right? This, um, this technique really applies and it's a super important skill. So before we get started, I wanna show you an example of something that actually doesn't uh, save uh, our data. So if you think about the calculator on the computer, right? This is one of the few applications I can think of that actually doesn't save data at all, right? We come in here and we say, hey, you know what? I wanna do some kind of calculation. So let's say I wanna buy a new car. And that car is twenty-five thousand dollars, and I, you know, I'm going to take out a loan. So let's say I want to take out a five-year loan. I'll divide by sixty, and you know, theoretically, without considering interest, this is pretty close to what my monthly payment would be for the car. That's it, and I'm done with the calculator, right? I'm not going to save this. I'm not going to come back to this calculation later. So I'll just close out of it. There's not a lot of applications that are like that. Most of the things we use nowadays, they have like logins or um, stuff you can open up from before. If you think about like a video game, you know, even if it's a sort of an online game, you know, think like a battle royale or something like that, where each match is its own thing, like nothing saves match to match, you're still saving your profile data, you know, your screen name, your, your loot or whatever it might be. Um, if you think about, you know, photos that you're taking on your phone, right? That's an example of writing data, a picture, to your phone's hard drive, um, and then opening that data to look at it later. You know, if you open a photo you took on your phone with um, the regular camera and you open it up to use it on Instagram, that's an example of reading from and writing to files. Um, but we're not gonna do really complex stuff. We're gonna stick with pretty basic things. So let me open up a, or a folder here that I've got. And you can see I've got four files in this folder. Um, one's called headphones.jpg, right? And you know that a JPEG is an image. So if I open this up, that's an example of reading from a file. I've just opened a file in Photos and the computer had to know how to open it up, how to open up Photos and show me that, that picture, right? This is my desired output. Um, when I talk about reading from like a text file, right? That's something like going into testanswers.txt, double clicking it and seeing, okay, well, A, B, C, D, that's the text that's in this file. That's an example of reading, okay? Um, well, let's say that I want to make a change to a file. 
like the Krabby Patty recipe. So I go in here, and let's say I want to have a Krabby Patty that has uh, cheese on it. So I'll just say, hey, this actually has cheese as well. Okay. So once I've done that, I've edited the file. So I'm, I'm no longer just reading that file. Now I've done something else. So once I click File and go to Save up here, now I've written to this file. So Krabby Patty Recipe is no longer what it was before. It is permanently changed. Um, if I were to say, you know, Control Z and take that out of there and then save it again, well, that's still another write. Okay, I'm still writing to that file. I'm just going back in time, but uh, sorry about that. Um, I'm not really, you know, ignoring the, the write process there. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing with Python. Was we're going we're to learn how to use Python to read and write files, and we're going to stick with basic text files for now. If you want to work on more advanced stuff, that's your own um, prerogative. But we're just going to stick with basic text files, TXTs. Uh, stuff that we can open up in like Notepad or WordPad, um, and we're going to learn how to work with those programmatically. Pretty important stuff. So uh, I look forward to uh, continuing this uh, with you, and we're going to take a look at how we will do that in Python right now. Before we move on to part two, which is how we're actually going to program uh, reading from files, we're not going to get into the writing um, this week, but we're going to learn how we read from files. I want to go over a few definitions with you. So. We're talking about files, right? And in case you aren't familiar with what a file is, uh, it's data stored on a computer in a specific format with a file extension related to its purpose. So a file could be a text file, um, a picture file, a music file, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, a file extension is the series of characters that come after the dot at the end of a file, and it indicates what type of data that file is. So like a JPG, that's a JPEG file, uh, a .app is what we would call um, like an application on a Mac OS machine. Uh, a .exe is an executable. This is what a lot of programs that you run on your computer are. They're executable files. Uh, and an MP3 is a, an audio file, as you probably know. Uh, when we talk about reading from a file, what we mean is that we're opening up the file to access um, the files. <laughs> I'm supposed to say the files data. All right, hold on. <laughs> we'll do a live edit here in the middle of the video. The files data. There, good. Okay, perfect. Um, and okay, so reading from a file that's opening a file to access the files data for some purpose. Okay. Writing to a file is saving or updating the data in a file. Now, these are different than the read-write operations in Python to some extent, but they they align pretty well. We'll go over what the differences are once we get there. Okay. So there's our definitions, and now we're going to move on to the programming piece.